guys i'm steve welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video if it's your first time stopping by the channel hit that subscribe button trust me won't regret it if you're a returning subscriber as always guys welcome back and i do appreciate the support guys i've been uh talking a little bit about this case with uh sade robinson 19 years old found out they're dismembered uh this guy right here has been charged with her murder his name is uh maxwell anderson he's 33 years old in my last video i said you know i'm new to doing this covering this story and if anybody has some information out there that's close to the situation to contact me well someone did and uh his name is xavier Carruthers. so shout out to xavier Carruthers. and uh he gave me this uh video that added up i mean it had more details in it but it kind of like brought a lot of stuff together and a lot of questions that i had you know was wondering like you know what was their association with each other how does a 33 year old man meet a 19 year old girl in addition to having her to himself in some secluded area where he could do the heinous crime he did to her. This video right here will explain it. And uh, it has some very good talking points in it. And it has some very good uh, information. So you guys take a look and let's catch up on this thing. And new today, 33-year-old Maxwell Anderson goes from a person of interest to the man charged with the death of 19-year-old Sade Robinson. It's a gruesome case that started 10 days ago with the discovery of a human leg in Warnemont Park. And we do have team coverage for you this morning. Zoe Chapala learned more about the in-depth investigation by Milwaukee law enforcement. But we'll start with Fox 6's Durante Matthews, who was in court for Anderson's appearance this morning. And Durante, you also spoke to the family of Sade Robinson. I did, and it was a very, very difficult day for her family, the family of 19-year-old Sade Robinson in court today. Many of them were in tears before walking out of court, and a lot of them were shaking, sitting behind the man who's accused of killing Sade, and that's, as you mentioned, 33-year-old Maxwell Anderson. Now, his charges were read in court today. Now, that includes first-degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and arson. Now, if convicted, that first-degree intentional homicide charge is enough to land him in prison for the rest of his life. But today in court, his attorney actually tried to get that homicide charge dismissed, saying that there's not enough physical evidence to prove it, but the judge dismissed it. Prosecutors say back on April 1st, on Monday, Anderson and Robinson were going out for a date. They went back to Anderson's home on South 39th Street sometime after 9 o'clock. Prosecutors say it's between that time and 12.45 in the morning that Anderson killed her. They say he then dismembered her body and scattered them at different parts around the county. Police found her leg foot and other human remains in different areas last week and police arrested Anderson on April 6th during a traffic stop. Now we did speak with Robinson's family. They gave us a brief statement after court. Sade was more than a person. She was an angel. Not having her right now is very painful. We need justice for Sade. Me and my family would never be okay. My sister and parents won't stop shaking and it ain't because they're nervous. Imagine trying to bury your niece with nobody for the service. I need justice for Sade. I have nothing more to say. And prosecutors did say that there are still parts of Sade's body that are still missing. Today, a judge said Anderson's cash bond at $5 million, but his attorney tried to get that lower to $500,000. That was later dismissed. Anderson is due back in court on April 22nd. Live outside of the Milwaukee County Courthouse, Durante Matthews, Fox 6 News. Durante, I'll throw you one other question, actually, if you don't mind, very quickly here. Uh, we heard from the uncle there. You could hear the pain and anger in his voice. You also spoke to Sade Robinson's mother. What did she have to say after court? So she essentially echoed the same sentiments as the uncle did, how she really wants justice for her daughter. Now, she was in a very understandably emotional state, and a lot of the words that she used are not really appropriate for, for television. But in a sense, she's very angry at Anderson, and more than anything, she just wants to have her daughter back. You can certainly understand the furor there. Durante Matthews covering this in Milwaukee County for us. Thank you very much. Now, while that was playing out in court, law enforcement officials held a press conference in Wauwatosa detailing their investigation, which again began 10 days ago, April 2nd, with the discovery of that leg and also the report that Sade Robinson was missing. And Zoe Chapala joins us now. After hearing from the county sheriff and the police chief, there is so much information and detail in the criminal complaint, yet still this gap towards the end, Zoe. What still don't we know? 
Yeah, and I think that that's just the best way to describe it. You know, I was looking at the criminal complaint and I'm like, wow, this is really detailed. They really have all of this information laid out here for us. And then when I got to page nine, because it was about a 10 page criminal complaint, I realized that there are still a lot more questions than answers at this point. I mean, some of the big things that I think we're still wanting to know is a motive. That is something that we asked the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office, and that's not something that they can answer at this time. Another thing, too, is we know that Shade Robinson and Maxwell Anderson met because they had they went on their very first date that last Monday night. Um, we don't know how they met. Investigators say that they think that they met at Maxwell's place of work. However, that's not totally confirmed because police are still investigating that. We also know, too, that investigators think that the two met at Anderson's place of work. Again, they say Shade and Maxwell went to the Twisted Fisherman last Monday on their first date and then to Dukes on the Water and then back to Anderson's house. They think that Anderson drove to Warnemont Park around three in the morning where that severed leg was eventually found. Surveillance video shows the car head toward the pump house and a shadowy figure on the beach. And phone records also show Sade's phone at Warnemont Park from about 3 to 4.30 that following morning. Now, we do have confirmation that the severed leg belongs to Sade Robinson, but what we don't know is if these other remains for sure belong to her. Investigators think that, yes, those human remains and the other body parts that were found do belong to her, but like I I said it's still pending those identification from other uh, different testing resource centers around the county and then also as well another big question that we're hoping to learn is when did this happen how did this happen and why i mean i think a big thing a big gap in the investigation that we're not finding out is did this happen in the home when they went back to anderson's house did it happen in the car before he set it on fire? Did it happen at the beach where the leg was found? Those are all questions that we asked the sheriff's office and that they still can't answer at this time because it's a very open investigation and still very fluid. But they do hope to get us that information as soon as they get that information. So we'll keep you updated on that. But. For now, in Wauwatosa, Zoe Chapala, Fox 6 News. Yeah, the answer from Sheriff Ball a number of times to those questions, ongoing investigation. While that continues, so does the legal case now with the preliminary hearing for Maxwell Anderson next scheduled for April 22nd. If you want to read much more about this case and today's major developments, you can go to fox6now.com, which has details from the criminal complaint. It tracks some of the different cell phone data and camera footage that prosecutors used to put together the path of Shade Robinson and Maxwell Anderson the evening of April 1st into the night and early morning of April 2nd. That's on fox6now.com. All right, guys, that's the story. I, mean, I thought that was a, uh, that had a lot of information in it that was left out in my first video. I wanted to share it with you guys. You know, I don't like half-assing on these videos. But um, this is a tragedy, man, and this is something they'll probably make a movie out of. Just the fact that a, a night of fun between two people turned into something that should never had been. Somebody left a comment in my last uh, video and said, hey, it's her fault. So I guess they must have seen something that we didn't see. But when I saw that, I was like, man, how could somebody say that? A lot of times in these videos we do, sometimes we take the sympathy out of it for the victim. Now, I'm not going to blame this girl. Number one, he's 33 years old, so his mind is way more advanced than her. I Meaning he might have had game, enough game to pull her out of that place. He still looked young. He might have told her he was 25 or 23. Don't, it don't matter what he told her. But the bottom line is this. I'm not going to blame this girl because if that's the case, every time something bad happens to somebody, when they go out on a date, it's their fault. So I can't really say that unless that person, you know, that made a comment. And no offense to you. I mean, you might know something I don't know. You didn't explain it. You know what I'm saying? But either way, the family's pissed, devastated. My man wrote a spoken word poem and said, express his anger in the poem. That was creative. I ain't even going to hate. But you've seen his face. He ain't got nothing to say. He need to do a lot of other people. This dude right here need to be torn apart by the very people he hurt, her family, because she ain't here to do it. I mean, just think about this is something that they make horror movies out of. This guy right here got the girl to come back to his house 
killed. They said he, he must have took a life around 12 something when he got there and dismembered the body. And he cut her in pieces, y'all. Pieces. He didn't just hack off the arm and leg. Her feet and never. He, he, he went and, and he did this child all types of dirty. And for what? If she came back to your house, bro, that was a chance that, a big chance that you was who she was choosing to deal with. But I think his whole motive was to kill this girl. And I think he was a serial killer in the making. If he hasn't done it before. Because think about it. It takes a lot, a lot of drive and thirst for destruction to dismember somebody. First of all, to kill somebody, but to dismember them. And you just met this person without no reasoning to do so, except your own appetite for the destruction of somebody else. I don't know where this case is going to lead, guys, but I mean, if any new updates come up, I'll do my best to cover them. This is a messed up case. And this dude sitting up there like it ain't nothing. That's the part that's scary. It's a lot more people out here that are like this. I bet you his neighbors and stuff never even knew he was like that. This type of dude is the type of dude that only come out the house when he go to his car and go back home. I bet you people probably next to him, he ain't nothing about it. Either way, man, they didn't see this coming. Nobody did. And this is a tragedy in itself. Like I said, man, this young lady, Sade Robinson, rest in peace, man. And a fi family, man, like, psh, come on, man. People was looking for body parts, really? All this for somebody's selfish, own selfishness and appetite to destroy somebody else's life, which had a ripple effect and destroyed the lives of a lot of other people who loved her. That's a thing. These people do stuff to people, look them in their eyes and take their life. Not even thinking about those that is love, that love this person or if the person was just love, period. I'm Stock Mike Steve. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.